What is up, Sopranos fans? Pure Kino here, and I'm back with another Sopranos vlog, um, or Soprano log, as one of my awesome fans um, suggested to me. But today we're going to be looking at another episode, um, Season 1, Episode 5, College, um, which some of you will know I already did a whole video on why the episode was so important to television history. I'm going to link that in the description. Uh, if you haven't, check it out. But in this one, I'm going to go over um, a lot of the details that I didn't get to focus on that first time around. So to give a quick recap, the episode is about Tony taking Meadow um, on a trip to visit some colleges in Maine she's thinking of attending. Um, while he's there, he sees um, a former member of his um, crime family who turned informant and ratted on the family. And he decides he has to kill this guy. Um, but he has Meadow with him. And he can't kill the guy right with Meadow with him. He has to kind of hide it from her, um, which is complicated because he's being honest with her for once about um, the mafia and himself. And they're really connecting for once. Um, so that's putting a strain on their relationship, too, that he has to, to do this murder underneath her nose. Meanwhile, uh, Carmela is at home sick and she uh, gets a visit from Father Phil they end up bonding, um, they really connect, they start drinking, things start to get a little intimate, uh, but before they can, he gets sick, um, he's really drunk, and the night ends pretty awkwardly between the two of them. So one thing I really didn't get to focus on last time was the Father Phil Carmela stuff, um, which I do think is pretty important. Um, you know, Father Phil, he is a spiritual mentor and a friend to Carmela. Um, they hang out together, they watch movies, they eat dinner by themselves a lot because Tony is usually away, um, you know, doing whatever he does. And Father Phil, um, he's kind of a creepy guy a little bit. Um, he's kind of a snaky, in the wings kind of guy, you know, the kind that kind of hangs around um, the girlfriend or the wife while the husband's away um, and kind of gets in through that method by being a friend and, you know, a shoulder to cry on. And it's also complicated because he's he's in a position of power over her a little bit um you know he's a religious figure and he uses that power both to be around carmela because he's a little bit attracted to her but also um he's not really interested so much in you know being with her or anything like that um but he does like using her to get things so food he loves her food um, and he likes using tony's um like house and tv and dvd player and stuff like that um, it's a very manipulative relationship, and it's interesting to see it kind of blow up here a little bit. Um, now, Carmela, she is very religious, but she's religious usually to make herself feel better about herself. She uses religion as a way to feel superior to people. Uh, you know, just like with the money and and the mafia, all the benefits that the mafia lifestyle affords her, um, she uses that to feel superior to people. She so does she does the same thing with religion. Um, and there's actually a great little line she has um, when she's talking to Father Phil about um, the things about Christianity that confuse her. She talks about the fact that Jesus said, the sun shines on the just and the unjust alike. And that part really confuses her and she doesn't like it. Um, specifically, she points out she doesn't like the idea of whores going to heaven before she will. Now, of course, when she says whores, she's obviously thinking about Tony's mistresses. The women he sleeps with really get under her skin. And she wants to feel superior to them because she's, you know, this morally virtuous woman and she has all this money and this great life. But she doesn't really get the idea that Christ was saying about, you know, being humble, um, not judging other people, embracing them, loving them. Um, she wants to use her religion as a way to just elevate herself, um, which is very in line with her character. Now, she does have one moment of real um, honesty in this episode, which is when she starts breaking down and crying and confessing to Father Phil um, about what she's allowed to happen under her house. You know, she's accepted Tony's immoral ways because she wanted the money and she wanted all the benefits. But it's actually a real moment of honesty when she does that confession. Uh, it's one of the very few times she's really honest. Uh, the only other time I can remember her being honest about that is um, when Christopher is shot in the third season, um, or the second season, I mean, sorry. Uh, she is praying to God for his health and she admits that like she knows her family is into some evil stuff um, and she prays that God will be merciful anyway. Um, so it's one of the few times she is really honest. 
Um, and I guess one last little detail to point out was that I found the the scene with Father Phil like chugging the communion wine um, really funny. Carmela even looks up and she's like, "What the fuck is he doing?" Um, and he gets really you know pissed drunk, and um, that ends in a very awkward encounter. But um, yeah, just a funny, ridiculous situation that they find themselves in. Now, a couple of the details from this episode I didn't get a chance to mention in the other video was the car chase scene. So I found this scene to be really unrealistic. Like, okay, so he's driving crazy. You know, he's swerving, going into the other lane and Meadow is freaking out. She's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Tony is saying, uh, you know, I'm just fooling around. Just relax. Um, and he keeps doing all this crazy stuff. And then finally, you know, they pull into the motel and the Meadow's just like, oh, that was weird. Like, she just kind of accepts it. Like, no, if that was in real life, she would be like, what the hell was that? Like, that was weird. Yeah, so that 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 one part was kind of unrealistic and a little ridiculous for me. Um, but another little detail I noticed was Tony calls um, Irina before he calls Carmela. Um, when he's in the f the phone booth, um, you know, he's saying like, you know, how's my sweetie doing? Um, and we're we're led to believe it's Carmela he's talking to, but it cuts to Irina. So it's really funny that he called his mistress before his wife, um, which is a very Tony thing to do. And she mentions a, a line that would become a title of an episode, um, The Knight in White Satin Armor. Um, that would become an epi uh, the title of an episode later. And I think that imagery um, is really evocative of The Sopranos. Like a knight is this masculine warrior, um, but white satin armor is weak and, and feminine. Um, and that disconnect there um, is kind of Tony in a nutshell. You know, he, on the one hand, is this badass mafia guy. But on the other hand, you know, he can't stop feeling weak and like a loser. And that's why he's in therapy. Um, so I think that is definitely a metaphor for the entire series. Um, another little detail was that Carmela calls Tony at the motel to see if he's actually there or not. Um, or if he's, you know, with, with another woman or something like that. Um, she would do that again in season two after Janice kills Richie and he has to go over there. Um, he calls his mother's house to see if Tony is actually there. Um, so that would be a, a move she would do a lot. Um, so yeah, so that was the little details I missed last time around. I know this is a kind of a different review because I already did uh, a normal review on this episode. But yeah, great episode, really important to television history. Um, and stay tuned for the next Soprano log uh, coming soon. Thanks.